Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Thursday, October 18th at 11.02 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at a graphic depicting major earthquakes along the Hayward Fault. The most recent being 1868. Prior to that, 1725. A 142 year gap. Prior to that, 97 years earlier, 1629, a major quake. 153 years prior to that, 1475, Columbus reaches the New World Order. 150 year, 58 years prior to that, in 1317, the Black Plague. Boom! And in 1134, a periodicity of 150 years or less. So, we're going to get to it. USGS calling for a major quake on the Hayward Fault coming out just 24 hours ago from top-rated seismic scientists. Let's get on with the cold and the snow, gusty winds, snow showers to accompany new cold blast in Midwestern and the Northeastern U.S. this weekend. Whew, it's like a broken record. Where do we go? Yeah. A renewed wave of cold air after the last one. Locally damaging winds and rain and snow showers will sweep through the Midwestern and Northeastern United States this weekend. Picture perfect pumpkins covered in snow. The region's first significant cold sweep of the season arrived at midweek with some areas seeing their first snowflakes since the spring. Collingwood, Ontario. Gorgeous picture. That's not. This week will end on a rather pleasant note with sunshine. But temperatures during both of the days and nights this weekend can be several degrees lower than their coldest levels at midweek. This weekend in the northeast, gusts 30 to 45 miles per hour, snow showers at high elevation significantly fall 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Grand solar minimum much? And that's tonight's first knowledge boom. They predicted a warm fall, and now they're predicting a warm winter. Where is the warm? Yeah, in Florida. <laughs> You'll get your cold blast. Mark my words. The white rain is coming to Florida. Nebraska record cold and snowfall this week. It is a winter wonderland, only mid-October. Record low temperatures occurred at several sites across Nebraska earlier this week when a strong cold front moved through with record-setting snow. Here's just a handful of the busted records. Alliance saw a low of 14.5C, which broke the previous record at 10. That is crushing it back to 1914 and the centennial minimum. Norfolk's daily max of 3.9C, Tied the 1937 record. Sioux City, Iowa's 5 degrees broke the previous cold to 5.6 back to 1937. North Platte's low of a negative 11 busted the previous record of 8.8. .8. That crushed it back to 74. Valentine's low of negative 10.6 crushed the 5 points, negative 5.6C record from 1976. And on and on. And deep snow. 60,000 customers in Nebraska lost power with heavy snow. Are they putting this on CNN? I don't watch that crap. Is this on the mainstream? I bet you global warming is. Snow, frost, and sun. Five things to know about the upcoming forecast. Heads up, Hudson Valley. <laughs> Yeah, frost, flurries, and frigid weather could be in the forecast over the next few days in the lower Hudson Valley. Freeze watch overnight. Temperatures are expected to peak in the mid-40s. Freeze watch will be in effect from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. Friday. And then the cold. We just talked about it. It's coming in. Over the weekend, rain and ongoing flood concerns in Texas. Pockets of moderate to heavy rain will persist in Texas. Possibly extend into the weekend. Gulf of Mexico moisture continues to overrun the stationary front to produce waves of precipitation. The most vulnerable location is the saturated hill country in central Texas. Areas in green, frost and freeze warning throughout the mid-Atlantic all the way into eastern West Virginia and eastern Kentucky. 
Western West Virginia. My bad. Indiana freeze and frost warnings. So check your county. If you got sensitive crops out there, they're going to die. Let's check the GFS model for snow. We have snow in the uh, central Rocky Mountains just a little bit over the next day. But then the lake effect snow is going to move into the northeast. These are lake effect streamers, are they not? And I do recall months ago they predicted that the lake effect snow would be minimal this year. Well, I think they don't know what they're doing. Just like I predicted record lake effect snow last year, I'm predicting it again only to break, break all-time records. So remember when Erie fell short of the all-time record? We're going to say Binghamton or somewhere up in New York is going to break the all-time record this year once again. And that's just based on the amount of cosmic rays coming in over the last 36 hours. Unprecedented. Now, check over in eastern Canada after eastern Canada gets buried in the next seven days. Western Canada brings in on the action with daily snow building up into the meter range. And this isn't even the end of October. We still have several more days. Look at the heavy snows in the upper shield here. That's the Arctic region. Arctic ice is going to be record highs in just a few months. All time. Mark my words. I wish I was wrong. Binghamton sees first snow of the season. Here are a few scenes of the west side of Binghamton on March 2nd. What are they talking about? It's October 18th. There's a picture from October 18th. Did you see snow when you woke up this morning? Well, many people did in Binghamton. Let's talk about the lake effect snow. The season is beginning and it's not just about snow. Yeah, it's about freezing cold temperatures. 51 in Midland, 60 in San Antonio. Are you kidding me? Fifty-one in Philly, forty-seven in Boston. Those are highs for Thursday. Thank you, Dominica Davis. You're looking spectacular tonight. Forecast highs Thursday for Louisville, fifty-nine, fifty for Pittsburgh, fifty-two Alpena, sixty-three in Little Rock. Ha! <laughs> L, you liar! Give me back my carbon tax. Feeling like fall. Yes, indeedy, it is. Dallas, 60 degrees. Average high, 78. 59 on Wednesday. Say it ain't so. <laughs> Chi-town, 10 degrees below normal. Philly, 9 degrees below normal. New York, 8 degrees below normal. <laughs> I just denied something. I don't even know what it is. Snowfall hits Massachusetts in October. Bahaba, where they make cabin faba. Arctic communities won't get crucial supplies after barge canceled due to excessive sea ice. What the f is going on? I thought we were global warming. It, I just, it's October 18th. It's snowing everywhere in record, and now there's no. Communities fear they've been cut off from crucial winter supplies after government-owned company canceled the annual supply barge that replenishes them. A family walks down the streets of Cambridge Bay in Nunavut on Thursday. Marine Transportation Services owned by the Northwest Territory says there's too much sea ice to run the scheduled barge to the Central Arctic communities. Well... Tens of millions of dollars worth of supplies, including household groceries, construction materials, and municipal equipment, stranded on the docks in Tutuyaktuktuk with no way to get them to more than 3,000 people who need them. Total next year's worth of supplies are on that barge. Whoa. What the f is that? I hope that's not the barge. Guess what the bomb said? Oh, I just erased it. We should probably open that. Yes, we know how to do it. Come on, bomb. Bomb predicts 
more storms as Penrith hit with one month of rain in half an hour. Totally fluxed. We'll watch it. Let's do it. Let's watch it. They're totally fluxed there. I don't know what we're looking at, but it's bad. Oh, look at that. It's raining out of the light fixture. Well, I hope he's not near there and getting electrocuted. Anybody have a lighter? Oh well. Heads up. The heavens open hard and fast in Western Sydney last night with some areas receiving a month's worth of rain in a half an hour. In Penrith, the bomb recorded 61.4 millimeters in half an hour, much more than the area's October average of 51 millimeters. Oh my goodness, that's not even a fire, but it is a boom. 17th, Eastern Spain about to get hammered by record rainfall. That is black. Whew. That is insane in the membrane. 275, 275 millimeters of rain. Torrential rains is expected in parts of eastern Spain over the next 24 to 36 hours. Totally fluxed. More than 400 millimeters possible. How is that possible? Major flooding and loss of life is likely due to cosmic ray increase, unprecedented cloud nucleation, atmospheric compression, and biblical flooding. Multiple models are in good agreement that torrential rains will deluge parts of eastern Spain as we head into the weekend. Here's what Severe Weather UK EU had to say about the latest update. In response to the cutoff low moving southwards across the western Iberian Peninsula, a strong easterly to northeasterly flow develops in the western Mediterranean. Warm, very moist air will push into the coastal areas, leading to a buildup of convective of instability. Doesn't that sound delicious? Additionally, orographic lift will enhance the conditions for torrential rain. Cosmic ray flux included and everyone will be totally fluxed. Convective and orographic rainfall is expected through the persistent training thunderstorms locally over 200 millimeters and possibly close to or even 400 mother fucking millimeters will accumulate over the next 24 to 36 hours. Do you know what this means, ladies and gentlemen? It means I click that button and nothing is happening. So sad. Yes, there's a high risk of major flooding. The recent devastating and deadly floods in southern France and Mallorca in the past two weeks occurred with similar rainfall totals. Whew. WX Charts is taking a minute. Will we ever get it? Let's go over here. 17,400 homes destroyed in Niger floods. 45 loss of lives. 45 people have died in the arid West African country of Niger because they're now being flooded. Since June, when the region entered its rainy season, almost 210,000 have been affected. And we're waiting for this video, which will never happen. Come check out the Niger floods. Totally flux there. Here is the Hayward Fault article. Coming out yesterday from the USGS, the Hayward Fault, shake maps for the 1868 Hayward Quake, and the 1989 Loma pre-8 pre quake. The most damage back in 1868 was from Oakland south to Hayward, and in the Loma pre-8, it was south of San Jose here, north of Santa Cruz. So, Santa Cruz to Berkeley, you're at risk. And there are shit tons of people that live there. So, big heads up there. <coughs> I'll leave you links to the article. It is quite extensive. Uh, so, read it yourself. And it's mostly historical about the most recent major quake the October 21st, 1868 historical quake, just nine years after the Carrington event. And these are things that are happening in the next decade, in your lifetime. There will be a major quake on the Hayward. There will be another major solar flare that knocks out the grid. And you need to be prepared. History repeats itself on a regular periodicity. Everything works in cycles. If you do not know that, 
you have not been watching the channel long enough, go back into our main page and watch the first video I made on cosmic catastrophe. These cycles are at long scales all the way down to the small scale. And the Haywood Fault graph shows a very regular 150-year periodicity of major quakes along this fault zone. And we are at prime territory for a major quake. We now know through modern science that increased cosmic rays when the sun shuts down, these major seismic events occur as well as siliceous rich volcanoes blow the top. Are you picking it up? I can't read it all for you. Seismic update. No quakes of note. This is the quietest we've been in a while. Cross your fingers. The pain lingers. Real quick, check for some quakes of depth. We have a Chilean quake at 102. Peruvian quake at 212. Heads up for a big quake in this region. These could be four shocks to a major event. And we have 150 over here at Papua New Guinea in an area where we don't need to see more seismic activity. Enough loss of life in that region. Unfortunately, I think a major tsunami is going to emanate from this region in the next few years. <sighs> Worldwide volcano news update. Saba and Kaya, sporadic puff emissions. We also have Ducono and Reventador, continuous volcanic ash at Ducono. Krakatoa, Cadenci, Torialba. <coughs> Come check this out if you want to know more information. Ongoing discrete volcanic ash emissions. This is a red update on the 17th at Krakatoa. So that baby ain't slowing down. Say it ain't so. Uh, I'll tell you what is picking up. LeakCon 2019, Denver, Colorado, exposing the lies. Conspiracy theory becomes reality. Two confirmed guests. Our first two guests confirmed. It's true. David Dubine, Adapt 2030, will be joining us from the other side of the globe. He's going to fly 20 in hours to Denver to smoke pot, kick ass, and take names. And he's one of our keynote speakers on Saturday where he's going to be talking about the climate fraud and solutions. Whew. That's going to be a lot of money to fly him in. Confirmed, Greg Allison, NASA insider and worm farmer. I mean, this guy kicks ass and takes names. If you haven't seen his interviews, we just did one. He's got a bunch of interviews up on Leak Project. And Saturday will be a keynote address from Greg. He'll also be speaking on Sunday, probably about sustainability and worm farming. But on Saturday, his specialty is grid vulnerability. And he runs this awesome uh, grid vulnerability hardening of the grid group in Alabama. And I don't want to misquote anything. So watch the interview. Greg Allison confirmed. And clearly Rex Bear. Leak Project is confirmed as a keynote speaker. So if you don't have tickets and you want to check out the pricing, they are going to be dirt cheap until the new year. Just click learn more. And you can pre-order tickets for the event of the century. It's true. Uh, let's, that's not how we do it. <clears throat> I own the page. So let's test the button. We're going there. Bear with me, kids. Are you prepared for natural disasters? Are you? Well, we'll get to that. It's going to be fun. <clears throat> Come over here. This is the ticketing page for LeakCon 2019. Secure online registration now. You will get, if you use the coupon code BOOM, 20% off the pre-order special all the way for the rest of the year. Single day admission. Two-day general admission, VIP admission. If you want the VIP weekend package, come over here, click one. Pick your t-shirt size. These are limited edition t-shirts. There's only going to be, I'm not even going to tell you the number, but they're going to be hand signed by everyone. You pick your size. 
You come over here and you put the coupon code in, all caps. No, you can use lowercase too. It doesn't matter. And your VIP is discounted 100 bucks, $400 for the weekend. That includes secret access to lodging where all the guests will be. A special, totally legal Oppenheimer Ranch cannabis package. Limited edition art signed and more. And that's all I'm going to tell you right now. Whew, I'm revealing too much information. Come over here and like the page and tell us who you want to see there that's not already there. I got a post up here. Who do you want to see here? We already got Art Bell potentially coming. And others in the conspiracy movement. Yes. Maybe we'll have an EU debate on climate ch uh, change. Yeah. Electric universe versus the standard model, maybe. Who knows? Come see what they're talking about. How about George Nori? Yeah. George, are you watching? Come like the page. Give us your suggestions. I will get in contact with these people. The most important thing in the meantime, we want to pull this event off and you need to be prepared because can hit the fan. It's winter. This is when major seismic events occur, major volcanic activity in the next three months. If you are prepared, this is my challenge. The emergency preparedness starts with you challenge. I know a lot of you prepping because I, my Patriot Supply, I can see we've sold $10,000 worth of stuff. A lot of cool preparedness stuff going out on our Amazon page as well. Probably $20,000 worth of stuff out of there. So if you're one of those people that are properly preparing prior to the event, hashtag prepare yourself E, send it to us. Take a picture with your gear. Don't tell us where you're at and we'll share it all on air. We'll share it live on a show. We're going to be sharing them for the rest of the year as we prepare for LeakCon 2019. Hashtag prepare yourself E. Emergency preparedness starts with you. Take a picture of your stuff and yourself and send it to us and we'll share it with the rest of the subs. Woo! That's a boom! Check out Oppenheimer Ranch Project store where you can support the channel by supporting your arse. Winter Survival Essentials, Survival Essentials, Fresnel lenses, knives. Send us your... <coughs> Um, suggestions of what to put in the store. I'm about to open up a store, uh, a whole section on books, preparedness books. Anita Bailey, PhD's book will be in there. Everyone we've interviewed. Tim Ball, and on and on. All the books you need about climate truth and preparedness. Follow the page and you'll be updated as we add more products that you need. Cannabis care products. Do you know we have them? Yeah. Drying trays. It is the season. Season extenders. If you live in the south, we have cloches, grow lights. Man, come get them. Look at this greenhouse for 150 bucks. If you can't afford that, I don't know what you're doing. There's even high quality greenhouses in this store. We have a greenhouse store. For 12 bucks, you can get a polyethylene grow tunnel and grow up until Christmas. Almost anywhere above. 30 North. Check it out. We got everything you need. If we don't, let me know. Hope you got something out of the video. LeakCon 2019 is happening. And you're invited. Get in on the discount before the new year. We only have 100 VIP tickets. Just a heads up. <laughs>